Hello friends, happy Wednesday, and welcome to another episode of Quandaries and Sundries, where we cover the science and history news of the day, and hopefully expand your knowledge, or at least give you a break from all the craziness of your day-to-day, -day, and hopefully give you a break from yours. I hope you're all doing well today, and if not, I hope I can help soothe your worry and anxiety, because we are trying something new this week, and I'll be releasing shorter videos daily, five days a week. And if you like this format, I'd love your opinion on whether you like this format or the previous once a week format. But before we get right into this, if you are listening on YouTube, I really appreciate it if you would give this video a like, a comment, and if you're new to my content, consider subscribing. Or if you're listening to this on Spotify or the audio platform of your choice, consider following. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. So sit right back get comfortable and let us get right into it. Paper. We use it every day for various reasons and purposes. Although if you're from the current generation alpha, you're probably more likely to send text or emails. And that just might be the way of the future. It is the process of an evolving society. But being able to keep records and send messages has always been an important part of our evolution and survival as the dominant species on this planet. Every culture has their own language, their own way of communicating and keeping records. However, various cultures had many alternatives to paper throughout history. Sure, various cultures had their own way of making paper, but it was expensive, labor-intensive, and hard to make. And in the end, mostly royalty was able to get their hands on it. The use of paper for the average citizen, however, did not come about until the late 19th century when, like most industries in America and Europe, steel, wood, paper, the production of many textiles and commodities became automated and faster and easier to make, a.k.a. the Industrial Revolution. But back to talking about what people used as paper alternatives in our ancient and not-too-distant past. I guess the farthest one could go back would be the use of cave walls as a method to convey a hunt or an accomplishment even before the creation of fire and our creation of language, we learned how to show one another our accomplishments and weave tales without the need to speak by just painting on cave walls. The oldest cave painting to date is about 44,000 years old. But I think that is a little too far back, for it was before language and it was not exactly portable like paper today. The first and oldest alternative form to paper that comes to mind are from the hands of the ancient Egyptians, who by using a chisel, they scribed everything they wrote on stone and limestone. When we see Egyptian writing, or think of them, we think of beautiful hieroglyphs adorning the walls and temples, thousands of years old, and still beautifully intact. But what most people do not know are that we have also found hand-sized tablets of stone that were probably used in schools to teach kids to become scribes to later work on the larger pieces we know today, or used in markets to keep a ledger of the stocks of grain, textiles, or livestock. Each region had so the pharaoh would have a record of, of it all. Now let us travel to the Far East, where the next alternative to paper I would like to highlight resides. There are many records and tales of paper in ancient China and ancient Japan, but once again, they are not the most cost-effective so instead, a more common medium for writing was bamboo or wooden strips. Before the introduction of paper into China, they stripped down bamboo into long rectangular pieces, strung them together, and would write vertically on each piece of bamboo. In ancient Japan, they also made charms and tags to ward off evil using a single block of wood in the same way, with the writing being vertical as well. Bamboo strips were a cheap and effective alternative. For the hardiness of the bamboo, and with the way they were bound, they could be easily folded up, and entire books were made up of pages consisting of dozens of pieces of bamboo strips, each containing a sentence or two. But just like ancient Egyptians' use of tablets, the bamboo writing could become heavy, especially with the bigger tomes. But if we are talking about carrying around a small document for keeping track of commodities and food, like I said earlier with Egypt, it's definitely a much lighter and easier to carry around solution. 
It also affected the culture in the way the language changed over time. Most character-based languages like Chinese and Japanese all traditionally write vertical, then move over to the next line and vertically write down again and so on. A huge change from the traditional Eastern horizontal writing. And I think that is because of the use of bamboo and wooden slip writing. The earliest surviving bamboo writing has been dated to around the 5th century BC. And the earliest recording of the origin of the Chinese language is dated to around the 3rd century BC, putting a clear path to the evolution of the Chinese language. The last ancient alternative to paper I want to talk about today is vellum, also known as hide. For thousands of years, humans have been tanning animal hides from their hunts to use as an early analog for paper, as well as clothing and even as a way to insulate heat in some primitive houses and also, they made great blankets, for especially in times like the Ice Age, death by the cold can mean the end to the species. Its durability makes it a wonderful choice, and we still have beautifully intact manuscripts made from this method dating back hundreds of years that are still intact. And recently, I found an interesting article explaining why most people preferred to use vallum made from sheep compared to cow in all legal documents predating the 15th century. Interestingly, if one were to take cow vellum and sheep vellum to compare, then write on both of them and try to wipe away what you wrote or even scratch it out, the sheep vellum would fall apart or leave marks to show that you had erased something. It also would make the piece unusable, and you would have to scrap it or make a whole new piece out of it. With cow vellum, it was so tough that it was easy to scratch out what you wrote and rewrite over it without damaging the hide. And that is why pre-14th century legal documents used sheep vellum. Interestingly, they were a perfect anti-fraud device. Compared to cow vellum, you could not alter the documents. Many officials, especially when dealing with the nobility, would rarely sign or authorize contracts without it being written on sheep vellum for this very reason. Sadly, after the 17th century, paper became more common, and the need for vellum paper was not necessary because paper became the cheaper alternative. The reason this revelation was only brought to light recently is because we do not have many legal documents made of sheep vellum to study. They are hard to come by because in 1925, the United Kingdom passed the Land Registration Act, whose purpose was to make it so every land deed was in writing, and many of the previous land deeds families had they held on to for generations and were made of vellum. And after the new law, since they were now filed in records at the parliamentary level, most vellum documents were repurposed and used for lampshades and shoes and other necessities, especially with poor farmers. I know the future of paper is turning out to be the digital world or the internet, but I think we will still always have a need for a physical form of writing. But at the same time, with what paper is doing to deforestation, I think we need to find our next alternative. I have heard hemp paper is easy to make and biodegradable, but the debate about hemp and marijuana is a whole nother crazy political story for a whole nother crazy day. Only time will tell what we use next. And in the 21st century, there are many strong opinions about using material like vellum, especially in certain communities and circles. But I think it's a great part of our history to look back on and see how what we wrote on or how we wrote affected our language, our evolution, and helped chart the path to our species. Well, that is all I got for today. I would like to thank you again for joining me for another episode. Do not forget to share this podcast to all those in your life who could use a scientific moment in their life. I wish you goodbye, my friends. I hope you never forget to grow and never stop searching for knowledge. And always trust your scientific nose. I hope you all join me tomorrow for another episode of Quandaries and Sundries. Stay safe, stay sound, stay healthy. Always question your logic and reality. Do not be afraid to follow the truth. And do not forget to stay informed. This is Van Masterson, signing off.